India is still a young country that gives us a chance of increasing the pace of growth and perhaps making India grow rich before it grows old. And what we have to do is make sure that those jobs are reasonable jobs with adequate protections, adequate health care and so on. India will spend billions on job creation and training as part of its new budget as it tries to answer frustrations over low employment. But is it enough? I'm joined by Raghuram Rajan, a former governor of, of the Reserve Bank of India, now at the Chicago Booth School of Business. Mr. Rajan, thank you for joining us. Before we get to this budget, you've warned that a lack of jobs across India could squander the country's demographic dividend in the future. What do you mean by that? Well, India is still a young country. Um, we have many millions of uh, young people entering the workforce every year. And that could be a boon if all of them get jobs, because that would increase the rate of economic growth, uh, that would, would increase well-being. And it's a dividend which lasts only for the next 15 to 20 years, because India like uh, many other uh, Asian countries, has very limited immigration. So as people get richer, they have fewer kids and the population grows older. So we have a window in which the size of the workforce keeps increasing relative to the people who are not working. That gives us a chance of increasing the pace of growth and perhaps making India grow rich before it grows old. But that window is narrow, and unless we employ the people coming into the workforce, it's not going to happen. Now, to give viewers some context here, less than half of India's working age population of almost 1 billion people is employed. Now, that's compared to around 70% in other emerging markets. And some of those captured in that data may actually be unpaid family and friends, meaning that that figure could be even lower Mr. Rajan, this new budget allocates $24 billion for job training and employment. It also lowers corporate taxes on foreign companies. Is it heading in the right direction on this issue? Well, it is heading in the right direction. That is something one cannot dispute. The question is, is it big enough? And and the real uh, issue really is, you know, what is going to work here? I mean, certainly some measures to get companies to invest more in training new workers, in hiring new workers and holding on to them, uh, those certainly uh, make sense. And we have to find ways of of doing that well. I think this budget offers a few measures. We have to see if they work. But we also have to recognize that part of India's problem is while we have a bunch, uh, a segment of workers who are really highly trained, uh, you know, top quality engineers, top quality scientists, Uh, We also have a large mass who are not well trained, who haven't been to good schools, who haven't got a decent education. And we have to figure out how to make them employable, which may require a lot of remedial training also. So uh, we need to work on every aspect of this. That's India's challenge. We know that recent governments have really focused on attracting manufacturing. Why hasn't that created more jobs? Well, manufacturing used to be the East Asian way of growth, right? You start with low-skilled manufacturing because of low wages, uh, you attract a lot of foreign direct investment, and you cater to global markets. Well, every element there is under threat. Uh, first, uh, you know, the uh, what uh, emerging markets now are competing with is not industrial country workers, but other emerging markets who have equally low wages but also with industrial country robots. So in a sense, uh, the comparative advantage of low wages, low wage workers has gone. Uh, Another problem is that, you know, you have a lot more protectionism now. Uh, Part of the problem is China came in in a really big way and China is still a big part of manufacturing, a part which many uh, developed countries are now wary of. And it's hard to see uh, room for another China-sized country. India has 1.4 billion people for another China-sized country coming into manufacturing. So uh, newly developing uh, countries like, uh, like India have to find a different path for growth. 
Uh, in fact, you've written that India, uh, unlike China, has missed the bus on manufacturing. Uh, do you really see it as being too late when we know that many countries are, in fact, trying to diversify away from China? Would that not be potentially to India's gain? I, I think that would be to India's gain, and India should attract as many of those flows as it can. And it's having some success, perhaps not as much as Vietnam and and Mexico, but it has it is having some success there. But I think India should play on a couple of other uh, factors. One, it has a large domestic economy. In a, in two or three years, India's economy will be bigger than both Japan and Germany at the current pace of growth. Uh, so that's one attraction for foreign investors coming into India. But another attraction has to be that India is doing really well in services, including service exports. Many of these are at the higher end, uh, you know, consulting services, IT services, legal services. You know, JP Morgan has 3,000 lawyers in India serving its global businesses. So uh, I, I think that could be another, uh, you know, place for growth. It, it is not going to be a huge employer, but it's going to be a huge foreign exchange earner. Where India has to seek employment is catering a lot more to the domestic market, both for services as well as for manufacturing.